So we want to highlight if consecutive numbers are the same. Let's take a look at the data here. And in this column C, we have a bunch of numbers. So here we have consecutive numbers, and they're all a 7. So we want to highlight this in green. So a space now, now tells us, OK, this is a different group. And here we have two numbers that are different. We do not highlight them. Next, we have a bunch of numbers, 9s. They're all the same, so those will be highlighted. And this goes on and on, possibly for thousands of rows. And so we want some easy way to do it. You could do it with a macro, but in this case, let's try to do it with formulas. So step one, we need to create a group ID number. So here I've simply sort of taken the easy way out, and I just type a 1 because this is the first group. Now, here in this cell, I'm typing a 1. And basically, it's a pretty simple formula. I'm just saying if C12 equals a blank, then take the value from above plus 1. If that's not true, the false part of our if statement, we're saying just give me the value above. So let's drag this down a ways and see what it does. OK, so we're getting the 1's filled in. Now, here we're getting the 2's for the next group and 3. The only problem with this is that, as you can see, the space that's uh, sort of in between the groups is given the, the, uh, the group number. But the, for our purposes, that's fine. So step two, write true if the value is the same as the next value. So we want some way to, here we want to say, OK, is this one the same as that number? And then here we want to say, is this number the, the same as this number? But here's the trick. When we get to the end of the group, meaning that the next value is a space, we don't want this 7 to look compared to the blank. We want this 7 actually to look upwards to the 7 above. So let's take, it the, let's take a look here. So the first part, uh, let's just drag this formula down a ways, all the way down. Double left click. So in this cell, we're just saying if C14, which is this one, is a blank, then we want a blank. So let's see what happens if we are here. We're saying if C14, which is the cell below, because right now we're in row 13. So we're saying if C cell uh, C14 equals a blank, then we want to compare the value in the current row to the value above that to, to see whether that's true or false. So if I highlight this part, I press the F9 key in the keyboard, it says true. So now I'm going to press escape. And the last part here, this would kick in if the first two parts are false. So imagine we're in this cell, and so C12 is not blank. Uh, that's the first part of the nested if. The next part is saying if C13 equals blank, which is not true because there's a, there's a value there, the number 7. So we're not doing this part. Oops, actually, we're not doing that part right there. So it's defaulting to this part at the end. So that is saying, OK, now compare C12 to C13, right? Because now we're this, this number is basically in the middle. So that part might be a bit confusing, but let's just recap easily here. Um, if it, this is a blank, put a blank. If this is the last number in the group, then compare it to the value above. And then for the first two, if you still see something below, then you want to compare this one to that one, and then this value to the one below. OK, so let's go to step three. So step three, now we want to say, basically, uh, we want to look at uh, compare this number, which is group 1, to all the other values in group 1. Uh, and we want to say, how many times do we see false over here? So let's look at a group that has false. Here we have a 3 and an 8. So they're, they're not the same. So we have false and false. So here we have two of them. And then here we have a bunch of 9s. And this is all true. These are all zeros. So we're going to put our conditional formatting rule on next. Let's take a look at any group that does not work has at least, it could be twos or something greater than that. Let's take a look at the nines here. If I put in a seven, I click away, and I put maybe a two over there. So anything other than a zero means that the numbers are not all the same. And, and looking at the formula here, it's just saying if, C2, if C20 equals blank then blank, else we're doing a count ifs for two conditions. It has to be the same group, and we're also looking at column F to see how many falses we have. All we need is you know, a couple of falses, and then we know that it's not all the same. So if you get 0 over here, if I were to change these back to 9s, watch what happens. This all will turn to 0. i put one more 9 over here, and of course we have a whole zeros for all of group 3. 
And finally, step four, add conditional formatting rule. And this is the, the probably the easiest part. So we go in here, uh, we can say new rule, and I'm going to click on formula here. And I'm going to type it in here. I'm going to say, so I'm in, the active cell is C11. You can see it here in the name box, and you can see it here as well. I have these cells highlighted. This is the active cell, so I write the rule as if it's just for that one. And I'm going to say equals G11 equals zero. And then we'll just go in here and we will put in color of green. Click OK. I'll click OK again. And now we see that it's all green. So let's test this out. If I change this to an 8, this should both of these numbers should turn green. And they do. If I change this to a 1, the whole group is now turned off.